Hello students, in this video we'll see how to change the limits of integration on a triple integral. Let's consider the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 2z over 3 to 2, and the integral from 0 to 4 minus y squared of a function dx dy dz. Let's figure out what the range of x, y, and z are in this region and use it to sketch the region. In this region, z goes between 0 and 3. That's what my z limits tell me. When z goes from 0 to 3, y goes from this line over here, this line is 2z over 3, up to 2. And x goes from 0 up to this cylindrical paraboloid, 4 minus y squared. Okay. So let's sketch this region see what it looks like, and they use that to flip the limits of integration. So here's the z-axis, here's the y-axis, and then here's the x-axis. Now, my z is going between 0 and 3. My y is going between the line 2z over 3 and 2. So here's the value y equals 2. And so we have this line over here, right? This line, of course, is what? This line is y is equal to, or 2z over 3 is equal to y, right? And this, of course, corresponds to the value y equals 2, right? Let's stop and make sure that makes sense. So of course, when y is equal to what? When, y, when z is equal to 3, y is equal to 2. And when z is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So that's exactly the line we have. So we're, we start over here, OK? And x starts at 0, so it starts in this triangular plane. And it goes up to what? It goes up to this graph, x equals 4 minus y squared. Now, what does that look like? Well, that's the same thing as saying that y squared y squared is 4 minus x on the boundary, which says that y is the square root of 4 minus x. So that's the boundary curve that basically is lifted up into a cylindrical form, right? So what does that function look like, square root of 4 minus x? Well, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. And when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 0. So I get this parabola over here. And then what happens? Every point on this triangle goes up to this what? Goes up to this cylinder over here. So there's a cylinder over there. So where will this point over here, 0, 0, 0, go? So 0, 0 for y, 0 for z, will go to the point what? We'll go to that point over here, 0. Where will this little tiny triangle over here go? Every point on this triangle is going to be mapped where? To that cylinder over here. But of course, the height is not going to be so high, right? The value of z is not so high, but then it gets a little bit higher, a little bit higher a little bit higher and over, a little bit higher and over, a little bit higher and over and back, higher, over and back, higher, over and back, higher, over and back, higher, over and back, and until it hits this top point over here. So it sort of squeezes into this sort of a shape like this, okay? So that's what our region looks like. And of course, there's that boundary over there. So it's inside of this, this configuration. And so now I want to change the list of integration. So let's do one particular example of this. Let's consider the order of integration dz, d, uh, let's do dz, then let's do dx, then let's do dy. Let's do this in order of integration and see how we would change it to this. So in this range, what is z going from? Well, the z value, and this, we're always in the first octet in this region, so z is going to start over here down in the plane z equals 0, and then it's going to go what? It's going to go up to what plane? z is going to start at 0 and go up to the plane that's defined by y. Namely, what's this say over here? This says that z is less than or equal to 3y over 2. So our integral starts with an integral from 0 to 3y over 2 of our function f of x, y, z. And that's the range for z. Now we need the range for x and y. So I need a dx and a dy. Okay. So what's happening for x? So as z goes from 0 up to this plane, what's the range of x? What does x do? x is going to start where? x is going to start at 0 and go up to what? and go up to that curve over there, right? x always starts at 0 and goes up to that curve. For which values of y? For the values of y that are between 0 and 2. So the y values go between 0 and 2. And for every y that's between 0 and 2, what are the corresponding x values? They go from 0 up to that curve, 0 up to that curve. And what was that curve in terms of what? In terms of x. So what's x going from? x goes from 0 up to that curve. So over here, I go from 0 up to the curve 4 minus y squared. So that's one way we can change the limits of integration. I can change them in another way. Let's do this one now. Let's do a dz, then a dy dx. OK, now x is last. So the last one, there's a couple of different ways to do this. So we want to think in the back of our minds, the x differential is going to be the last thing we see. That's the very last thing over here. It's going to be what? It's going to be a 0. The maximum range of x is what? Is 0 up to 4. 
That's the range of x. It has to be a constant range. Then my z integration is going to stay the same, right? Because I'm going to go from 0 to 3y over 2. That's going to be the range of z. It's independent of that. So x, y, z. And then I have a dz. Then I have a dy. Then I have a dx. And we have to figure out where y is going from. So as x is ranging from 0 to 4, where is y ranging from? Well, y is going up to this what? up to that curve over there as a function of x. So what is that curve as a function of x? We already found it. Namely, y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x. So y goes from 0 up to the square root of 4 minus x. And we've changed limits of integration in two ways. We can do the other three ways by doing similar arguments and looking at these inequalities in the picture to make sure we're geometrically in the right range. If the x differential is last, if the x differential is last, the last integral is going to go from 0 to 4. If the y differential is last, you're going to go from 0 to 2. If the z differential is last, you're going to go from 0 to 3. Then you need to find the corresponding shadow region in those planes and then figure out the surface integration. Thank you very much.